Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. The refreshing, delicious treat that gives you chewing enjoyment presents for your listening enjoyment John Lund as... Johnny Dollar. Henley Conrad, Johnny. Oh, hello, Mr. Conrad. How are you? Fine. Uh, can you take a job? No trouble at all. Well, this is it. On Thursday of last week, we got a call from the New York police. They'd confiscated about $100,000 worth of rare gems. A man named Wells had been murdered, and they found the jewels in the water pipe beneath the sink. Your company insure Wells? No. But one of our clients in Europe was robbed about three months ago. The same jewels? We think so, but we can't be positive. They've been removed from their settings, and some of the larger ones have been recut. The police are holding Mrs. Wells, and she claims the jewels are rightfully hers. She says neither she or her husband knew they were hidden in the water pipes. Well, unless it can be proved the jewels were stolen, she's just liable to end up with them. Possession, huh? Yeah. It's a funny one. When can you start? I've started. <laughs> The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum bring you John Lund in another adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. For refreshing taste, plus chewing enjoyment, treat yourself to delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. When your mouth and throat feel hot and dry, a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint gives you quick, long-lasting refreshment. The lively, full-bodied Spearmint flavor cools your mouth and freshens your taste. The chewing itself helps keep your throat pleasantly moist. Best of all, you can chew and enjoy refreshing Wrigley's Spearmint gum almost any time and any place. Keep a package handy right in your purse or pocket so you can chew a stick whenever you want it. For refreshing taste, plus chewing enjoyment, treat yourself to delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. Millions enjoy it, and you will, too. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office World Insurance and Indemnity Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Stanley Price matter. Expense account item one, $21.85. Train fare and incidentals between Hartford and New York City after receiving from you the necessary information concerning the case. I arrived in New York at 10 o'clock that morning and went directly to police headquarters where I looked up Captain Fred D. in charge of robbery detail. Now, uh, sit down, Mr. Dollar. Oh, thanks. Glad to help you any way I can. Well, if it isn't too much trouble, I'd like the whole thing from the beginning. Sure. Last Thursday, we got a call from a man named Price, Stanley Price. Said if we came to 956 East 114th Street, we'd find 100,000 in stolen jewels. Then there was a shot, and the line went dead. When we got there, we found the dead man. Wells? Yeah, Robert Wells. Shot twice in the head. You're holding the wife? Not since 8 o'clock this morning. We've got no evidence. No murder weapon, nothing. And of course, she swears she knows nothing about it. Your company thinks the jewels belong to one of their clients. Yeah, but they've been taken out of their settings and recut. Such a good job, they can't be identified. Hmm, only one thing that ties in... Wells returned from Europe last Tuesday. Been over there for about three months. The robbery was abroad. Yeah. Got anything on the man who gave you the tip? Stanley Price? No, nothing much. We know a Stanley Price. We think it's the same man. He's small-time hood. Picked up a couple of times. No convictions. Been making book lately, but we can't prove it. Can't find him anywhere. We got an AAPB out on him. And you released Mrs. Wells? Yeah. She living in the same place? Well, she went back to the apartment. She's still there. We got it staked out. Well, it seems to me the first thing to do is find Stanley Price. <laughs> We'd like to. I've got an old friend that knows all about small-time bookmakers. I'm going to drop by and have a talk with him. Anyone I know? Oh, probably. But he'd be hurt if I mentioned his name. <laughs> Hope you make out. Now, what about the wife? You going to see her? After I take care of a few details. What's she like? You won't mind a bit. I 
left headquarters, checked into a hotel, then made arrangements to rent a car. At 12.30, I was pulling up in front of a brownstone in the village where an old friend lived. His name is Henri Duval, abstract painter and lover of Paris. Mutuals. Henri. Who who is he? Come on, Henri, open up. Go away. It's Johnny Dollar, Henri. I don't trust no one. My landlord is a man of many voices. I'm not your landlord. Calzano? Cross my heart. Johnny, <laughs> mon ami, Johnny. I haven't much time. I need a favor. I save. I save. Hello. For you, a portrait costs only um, fifty dollars. No pictures, Henri. No pictures. Ever heard of a man named Price, Stanley Price? No. Paid your rent. Mm, same answer. I have a small ten-dollar bill here. Mon ami, you would attempt a lowly bribe? Well, what do you know? Here's another ten. Uh, you, you know, I would ask you to stay for lunch, but Greenbaum will not even let me look in his delicatessen window anymore. Twenty-five? Uh, bien. But I only do it because I have the love for Greenbaum. Show a little interest in Stanley Price for a minute. Stanley Price, here. <laughs> Peasant. He's a bookmaker? Hmm, of a sort. He owes me eleven eighty. Marianne in the eighth at Ialia. By eight lengths. Mon Dieu, such a filly. Henri. Stanley Price. Ah, oui, oui, the low life. Where can I find him? Je ne sais pas. Henri? But it is the truth. Scout's honor? But of course. If I knew where the peasant was, would I not collect my 1180? But of course, Scout's honor. Uh, look, you see? You're only holding up one finger. Uh, Le Cob Scout. Oh. When was the last time you heard from him? When he took my two dollars that wins for me the 1180. And then he was in the fish business. Fish business? Ah, oui, oui, oui. I know because he brought me two elevators, which I promptly made into a magnificent bouillabaisse for my landlord. <laughs> Terrible. The stew? Ah, mais no, mais no, mais no. Just the fish. Uh, believe me, those two elevators were sold. They remembered Jonah. Was he selling fish? No, 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 no. He was not selling fish. He was not selling fish. He was catching them. He had a boat. When I went down to collect my 1180, the boat was not there. Where did he keep the boat, Henri? Uh, <laughs> a disgusting place. It was called... Uh, uh, oh, a schooner landing. A place like that simply should not be. Do you know why? Stinks. Mm. Well, thanks, Henri. Oh, but, but you, you are leaving? Yeah, you can unlock the door. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Hello, bonjour, mon ami. Vive la France. I climbed back into the rented coupe and drove to the waterfront where I finally located Schooner Landing. A lot of small boats were tied up in slips, and an old man sat outside a shack at the head of the dock, sunning himself. Hello. Hello. You run this landing? Yep. You know a man named Price? Stan Price? Yep. Yep. Seen him lately? Nope. When was the last time you saw him? You a cop? Nope. That's too bad. Why? He owes me a week's rent on a boat. Skip out? Yeah. Understand he was fishing down here. That right? Yep. How long ago did he rent the boat? Two weeks ago. When did he skip out? About a week. Anything unusual about 
things that he did? Well, he weren't no fisherman. Why do you say that? Yeah, he didn't know the first thing about it. Fishing, that is. When he first rented my boat, he used to go out for two or three hours, come back with a couple of fish. He didn't have no gear to speak of, no live bait. Just a pole. Well, didn't that seem kind of strange? Weren't none of my business. He had a license. You mean a regular fishing license or a commercial? Yep. Commercial? Yep. Did he do anything unusual the last day he was down here? Well, don't know. He went out about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. He was back here about 6.30. Only thing unusual about that, uh, it's a funny time to do fishing. What date was that? Week ago, yes. Oh, no, no, wait, no. It's, it's a week ago tomorrow, Wednesday. Oh. Thanks, Pop. You sure you ain't a cop? Yep. G-man? Nope. Don't say no more than you have to do. Nope. Bye, Sonny. I left Schooner's Landing and made a beeline to the Bureau of Licenses, where I located the fishing license that had been issued to Stanley Price. It had his picture on it, and the clerk allowed me to take it. I thanked him, then climbed back into my car and headed for 956 East 114th Street and Mrs. Wells. Yes? My name is Dollar. What can I do for you? I get tongue-tied when I stand in a hall. You want in? That's it. Why? Ever see this picture before, Mrs. Wells? Come in. The uh, man in the picture, who is he? Don't you know? I've only seen him once. Oh, won't you sit down? Thanks. Where did you see this man, Mrs. Wells? He came to see my husband. He was leaving just as I arrived. Your husband say who he was? No, mentioned something about some business he had with him. Well, if it makes any difference to you, this man in the picture is Stanley Price. Oh, one the police are after. The man they think killed my husband. The man who called and told the police about the jewels your husband hid in the water pipe. You're from the police? No. I'm an insurance investigator. Oh. Your husband just got back from Europe a week ago, didn't he? Yes. By boat? Yes. What day did he arrive? Last Wednesday. You know, I don't think I've ever seen a man with such attractive eyes. They're really very unusual. <laughs> nice hair, too. So curling. I'll stop back when I've got more time and we'll straighten it out. I'm leaving? Yes, I'm going home and have another talk with Dad. Well, in case I might want to get in touch with you... I'm uh... staying at the Shelton. Oh, uh, by the way, what time did your husband's boat dock? At five o'clock. Thanks. Sure. Say hello to Dad. <laughs> I finally managed to get down to my car and drive back to the hotel. I called Lieutenant D and briefed him with what had happened to date. Then I went downstairs to get some lunch. As I crossed the lobby... Don't turn around. What is this? Just keep looking straight ahead. I want something. I was just going to have some lunch. It'll keep. Will it? I haven't got much time. Give me the picture. Oh. Let's have it. And if I don't? Then you get shot right in the lobby of the Shelton Hotel. Friends, no matter what kind of work you do, it's a real help to chew delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum right while you're working. When you're warm or tired, for instance, the lively, full-bodied spearmint flavor is really refreshing. It helps keep your mouth and throat feeling cool and moist. Chewing on that smooth, good-tasting piece of Wrigley's Spearmint makes the time pass more pleasantly, too. It seems to make your work go smoother and easier. Keep a package or two of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum handy all the time. Enjoy chewing Wrigley's Spearmint while you're working and at other times. That's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, 
delicious. And now, with our star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. have it. Well, it's the only one of me on a bare rug facing east. What'll Mom say? The picture of Stanley Price. Okay. That's being smart. Now, you stay put. Count ten before you turn around. Believe me, Dollar, I mean it. I'll kill you if you move before ten. You're being pretty silly, Price. They'll pick you up sure. I don't think so. Oh, by the way, Henri Duval says to thank you for the 1180. Uh, 1180? Oh, yeah, tell him it was nothing. It sure wasn't. Start counting. One, two, button my shoe. Three, four, close the door. Five, six, pick up six. I counted to 20, just to be on the safe side. Any guy who'd stick a gun in my back in broad daylight in the middle of a hotel lobby was pretty desperate. I finished counting, put in a call to Henri Duval... Then headed for the robbery division and Captain D. Right in the hotel? Yeah, not ten minutes ago. I had that picture of Stanley Price from the fishing license. Well, I don't get it. What's so important about that picture? Certainly not the only one of Price. We got mugs on him in the file. I got a big hunch. My boss said it was important to prove those jewels were stolen or have somebody positively identify them. That if this wasn't done in a certain amount of time, the jewels would automatically go to Mrs. Wells. Well, that's right. Under normal circumstances, if we couldn't prove they were stolen or that they belonged to someone else, we'd have to turn them over. But there are enough extenuating circumstances. Uh, the killing of Wells, the way the jewels were hidden in the pipes, a robbery in Europe, and Wells' subsequent return a short time later, we can hold on to them for a long time. Don't. What? Do me a favor and turn them over to Mrs. Wells. I think it'll bust this thing wide open. That's a big order. Look, the guy who stuck me up in the lobby knew I had the picture. Somebody had to tell him where I was staying. Only people who knew that were you, Mr. Conrad from my company, and Mrs. Wells. All right, Mrs. Wells told Price. It wasn't Price. It wasn't? Not unless he paid Henri, uh, that is a friend of mine, 1180 in the last couple of hours. Maybe he did. He didn't. I checked. Look, I I'm sorry, but I'm confused. Yeah, so am I a little. But a figure something like this. Wells arrived last Wednesday by boat in the afternoon around five. That's right. Stanley Price was being a fisherman then. Okay. He'd rented a boat, taken out a fishing license. The day that Wells arrived, Price went out in the afternoon, stayed about two hours, came back, and then disappeared. Then Wells shows up with a sink full of jewels. Right. Probably had him on the boat. Avoided customs by dropping them overboard, and Price picked him up. Yeah, and Price could have killed him for them. Oh, it doesn't make sense. Wells was killed in his own apartment. Yeah? If Price picked up the jewels out of the water, why go to Wells, give him the jewels, let him hide them in the sink, kill him, leave without getting them, and then call the police? I'm convinced. Another thing. The pickup was pretty carefully planned. Wells couldn't have done it all by himself. He was in Europe. Somebody here had a plan it. Someone who knew Wells had the jewels. The wife. Yeah, looks that way. And the guy who stuck you up wasn't Price. Maybe there's a third party. Yeah, it could be, but I doubt it. I'd like to go down to the morgue and take a look at Wells. Sure, I'll call him. Okay, Charlie. Didn't help his face. How'd you get an identification? A wife. This isn't Wells. It isn't? This is Stanley Price. You sure? The picture on the fishing license. This is the same guy. I'll have Mrs. Wells picked up. And miss out on the big catch? Let me take the jewels over to her. It'll look official. Insurance company agent and everything. The captain was reluctant, but he agreed. We went back to headquarters, and he presented me with 100,000 in jewels. I left for Mrs. Wells' apartment, followed by two of New York's finest. The captain was agreeable, but cautious. 
The boys staked out across the street, and I went into the building and up to the apartment. Hello. I spoke with Dad. Was his advice sound? Oh, he just said there were bound to be days like this. Then come in. Is this going to be uh, business? I come bearing gifts. Oh. I'm afraid the police can't keep these any longer. Uh, the jewels? Mm hmm. There you are. I don't understand. Well, there's a little law after a certain but time. But the last time I talked with the police, they said they could impound them until my husband's murder was cleared up. Oh, no, afraid not. You mean I just get them? No strings? Not a one. Uh, Mr. Dollar. Mm hmm. Sit down. Sure. Now, you work for the insurance company, don't you? Uh-huh. Well, my husband wasn't insured. Oh, he should have been. Not that you need the money now, but just suppose you hadn't been lucky enough to have your sink stopped up with all those nice little jewels. If my husband wasn't insured, why are you mixed up in this? You really want to know? Uh-huh. My company thinks those jewels were stolen from one of our clients. I just can't stop looking at your eyes. They're even bluer in this light. Honey, mm -hmm. get to it. All right. I think something's real wrong. Wrong? Mm-hmm. I thought maybe you'd like to tell me what it's all about. Well, you've got the jewels. And what do you think I'm going to do with them? Well, that's up to you, isn't it? Your company thinks these jewels are stolen, and you're just turning them over to me. Can't do anything else. <laughs> Mr. Dollar. Johnny. Uh, Mr. Dollar, it's too easy. Disappointed? Well, suspicious. I've been around a little while. Somehow I guessed that. And I think you're trying to put little Lois in a bind. Really? Yeah. And even if you've got the prettiest eyes in the whole wide world, I'm not going to let you. You have something in mind? Mm-hmm. Good night. What? Oh! It landed right behind my right ear. I don't know what it was, but it was hard and it was cold. Whoever was on the other end of it had moved up behind the couch while Lois had kept me occupied. I went right to sleep and stayed that way for about ten minutes. When I came to, I was all alone, except for a large swelling that was getting big enough to wear a hat. I stumbled downstairs and looked for the two policemen on stakeout, but they disappeared too. So I found a phone booth and put in a call to Captain D. Uh, they're, they're tailing the wife. Stillman just checked in and said they were with her downtown. She's doing some shopping on Fifth Avenue. She's a decoy. She's leading your boys away from Wells. Where are you? In the Wells apartment. I got slugged about ten minutes ago. Wells must have been in the apartment the whole time. After he put me to sleep, the wife probably left by the front door and led your boys downtown while Wells left by the back way. Huh. You can bet he's got the jewels. He'll try to get out of town. I'll have every exit from the city covered. Okay, but he's smart enough to know that. When you're through, meet me at Schooner's Landing. Schooner's Landing? Yeah. My guess is Wells is going to take a boat ride. It was about 4.30 in the afternoon when I arrived at Schooner's Landing. The old man was walking up from the slips. Hello, Sammy. Pop, which boat was Stanley Price renting? That one. Just getting ready to go out. I just got through gassing her up. Fella paid me prices back rent. Wait, 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 wait. there's something wrong? Bob, it's Dollar. Good afternoon, Mrs. Wells. Bob! Drop the gun, Dollar. Drop it! The police are right behind me. Okay. Sit down. You taking him? He's an insurance man. He's gonna be our insurance. If the police try anything, I'm gonna shoot you, Dollar. Hold the gun on him while I get us out of here. I thought you were shopping on Fifth Avenue. I was. Those two policemen that were following me probably still think I'm trying on lingerie. That's what happens when the police force hires gentlemen. How's your head? Uncomfortable. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll bet. Boys. Yeah? Take over the wheel. Keep it headed right for the breakwater light. Know anything about boats? They float. It's going to be a long ride. It'll be pretty rough when we hit open water. 
You're Robert Wells, aren't you? That's right. How'd you figure it? I saw Price in the morgue. Your wife identified him as you, but the picture on the fishing license showed he was Price. You didn't know whether I was working with the law or not, but you had to get the picture to give yourself enough time to get out of the country. I knew the damage it could do if it got to the police. Why did you kill Price? He wanted 50% to fence the stuff. I said no and then caught him phoning the police. Had to kill him. So you put your papers on him and told your wife to identify him as you. The jewels were in the pipes under the sink. I knew the law would be there in 10 minutes, so I had to take a chance they wouldn't find him. Bob, there's a boat coming up pretty fast. So what? I hate to spoil the party, but I think it's the Coast Guard. Bob! Shut up and stay with that wheel. It looks like the police... Shut up! All right, Dollar. Get up on the bow. Oh, I'll get seasick. Move! I want him to see you. Look, I don't swim very well. How about if I take this life preserver? Put it down. Sure! Bob! 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 <laughs> stay right there, honey. Stop your boat! Heave to! Better do like the man says. Come on, Dollar, stop that boat! All right, all right. Keep your barnacles on. Expense account item two. Eight dollars and seventy-five cents for a big dinner that made up for the lunch I'd missed. After that, I went back to the hotel and got myself 12 hours of a good night's sleep. Expense account item three, the $25 I'd bribed Henri Duval with. The last time I saw him, he was in Greenbaum's delicatessen, spending the money with his arm around Greenbaum. They were both smiling. Expense account items four and five, $42.15, car rental and hotel bill. Item six, $15.65, train fare and incidentals back to Hartford. Expense account total, $113.40. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Remember, friends, for refreshing taste plus chewing enjoyment, treat yourself to delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. The taste of fresh spearmint is cooling and delightful, and there's lots of it in every stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. It freshens your mouth, helps keep your throat moist, and sweetens your breath besides. You'll enjoy the good chewing, too, because Wrigley's Spearmint is so smooth and pleasant to chew on. There's nothing else quite like it. Next time you're at the store, stop at your friendly merchant's display of chewing gum and get a few packages of good-tasting Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. Always keep some handy for refreshing taste plus chewing enjoyment. That's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, brought to you by Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, stars John Lund in the title role and was written by Blake Edwards with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were John Stevenson, Kenny Delmar, Jay Novello, Howard McNear, and Mary Ship. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. <laughs> The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's story of Johnny Dollar and that you're enjoying delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum every day. This is Charles Lyon inviting you to join us again next week at this same time when from Hollywood, John Lund returns as... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is the CBS Radio Network.